Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a YouTube channel specialized in the GED math test. And as always, we're going to do several questions with uh, different uh, formats as you are expected to answer in the test. We're going to start with uh, slope questions because a few of you have asked me about this. So uh, the first two questions are going to be slope. So in the first one it says, what is the y-intercept of the equation below? Okay, so what they're asking you is at what point does the y excuse me, does the line cross the y-axis, okay, the vertical axis. And they're giving you um, an equation in this format. So this format, when you have x plus y is equal to a number, is what we call standard form. So what you have to do is, um, first of all, change this equation so it looks like this in y-intercept form. Okay, and the reason you want to do this is because ultimately we want to find out the value of b, which you can see there in the top right. All right, so you would take your equation like this and then um, isolate the y on the left side by subtracting the minus 5x on both sides. That gives you this. Then you're going to divide uh, by 14 uh, on the left side and then by both numbers on the right side. Okay, so make sure you do that. And then all you have to do is reduce these numbers, and it gives you um, y is equal to 5x over 14, negative, plus b, which is 1 half. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Question 2 is also a slow problem, but it involves you actually um, looking at the graph, um, analyzing it, and then working out the slope of the line. All right, so remember that the slope of a line is actually how steep a line is. Okay, another way to talk about it is what we call the rise over the run, meaning how, um, how the height or the steepness of that uh, line, and the run refers to how the inclination, I guess, horizontally, how, how much it goes on the horizontal plane. Mathematically, we represent it with this equation. Okay, so if we wanted to find the slope of, of this line, all you have to do is choose any two points. Okay, these are the two points that I've chosen. So let's find out first the coordinates. So if we do this, we're going to find the x coordinate is 3 and the y coordinate there is 7. Okay, so we're going to call these uh, x1 and y1. We're going to do the same thing for the second point in the bottom left. Okay, so there we go. Those are the coordinates for x2, y2. And then just plug those numbers into your equation there on the left. And then you end up with minus 12 over minus 9, which is 4 thirds. Um, and if you, um, you're you wondering which points do you select on the line, just choose the, the easiest ones to figure out. The You know, I always choose the ones that fall um, very clearly on a, a number. Okay, so you can choose any two points. So here's another example. So in this case, the coordinate here is 1, 4, and the coordinates here are minus 8 and minus 8. So once again, if you plug these numbers um, into your equation like this, you end up with minus 12 over minus 9, 4 thirds. Okay, so that's one method to do it. Another method that you could use is just simply look at the graph, at the line. Okay, so when you uh, do y2 minus y1, what you're really looking at is the change in y. Okay, so how has the height changed over how has the, the horizontal, the run, changed? Okay, so the change of y over the change in x. So if we look at the change in y, the change in height or the vertical axis, all you have to do is count the little boxes from that first point on the top right to the point at the bottom left. Okay, so there's 12 boxes. And remember, this is going to be negative 12, okay, because you're crossing below the x line into the negative part. Okay, so that would be the change in y, minus 12. And then you're going to do the same thing for the change in x. So how much has it changed horizontally? Okay, what's the run? What's the change in the run? So if you count the squares, it gives you 9. And once again, you're crossing over to the left side, which is negative. So this would be actually negative 9. So you have minus 12 over minus 9, which is 4 thirds. 
Okay, so whichever method you use, you should get the same answer. All right, this next question is a question that requires order of operations, okay? So it asks you to simplify the expression. And notice that you have exponents, you have division, you have brackets, etc. So remember that in math, there is this idea of order of operations, meaning that you have to do uh, specific mathematical operations in a specific sequence or order. So you have to, first of all, solve from left to right, then follow something called PEMDAS, which uh, stands for the, the sequence of these mathematical operations. So P for parentheses, E for exponent, M multiply, D divide, etc. And then just always remember that the multiplication and, and division are interchangeable, meaning that you can divide first and multiply second, or do it in the other order. And same thing for addition and subtraction. All right, so if we go back to our equation, uh, remember we're gonna solve the parentheses first. And I am actually gonna rewrite that parentheses because um, I don't like that division, so I'm gonna write it like that. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're always, you always have to solve, um, it's like a Russian doll, okay? So you always have to solve the thing in the, the smaller bracket and then move outward, okay? So we're gonna solve uh, the 37 minus 32 first. Okay, that gives us five. And then remember that the second thing in order of operations after the parentheses was the E in PEMDAS, which stands for exponents. So we're gonna do five raised to the fourth power. That gives us 625. The next thing in PEMDAS was multiplication or division. Okay, so I'm gonna choose to divide uh, what's inside the bracket. Well, I'm not going to choose to. I'm going to do it. Um, that gives me 125. And now, once we've solved what, what's inside the bracket, we could go ahead and do what's outside. Okay, so if we multiply 2 by 125, that gives us 250. Multiplied by 1 fifth is equal to 50. Okay, so that's answer B. Question four is one of these um, statistics problems. So it tells you Drew just got his real estate license. He studied the prices of condos in Jacksonville for several properties shown below. If the mode is uh, 231,600, find the median price. Um, sorry, I made a mistake in this problem. Um, the questions should say find the mean, okay? The mean, not the median, okay? So the mean, which is what I wanted to ask you, is the ar arithmetic mean, okay? And the way that you calculate it, that is that you say you add the total number of value divided by the total number of items. So in this case, when you add all of these together, it gives you that number. There's five items, so if you divide by five, it gives you 239,486, okay? That's the mean price. All right, so I made a mistake in writing the question. It's not the median, but the mean that I wanted you to find out. Um, and I don't notice that I threw in there the word mode at the beginning of the question, um, and that's just to distract you, okay? Because sometimes, you know, when you're in the test, you're like, oh, what was the mood? What was the mean? What was the median? Okay, that was a distractor. So the correct answer is B. Okay, question five. So in the GED, you also sometimes um, have these drop-down menu questions where they ask you to extract information from a graph or from a line plot uh, to answer a question. Okay, so if you click on this, it brings this drop-down menu. And it's asking you, it says, the line plot dis uh, displays the growth of 12 plants over one week. And then you have to select the number of plants which grew three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so it's there's 12 plants, so if you go ahead and count the number of X's, you should have 12 X's. And you can see that uh, two plants, okay, two of the X's, uh, grew one-fourth of an inch, as you can see there. Um, uh, five of them grew half an inch, and so forth. Okay, so it's asking you how many of these 12 plants grew three-eighths of an inch. All right, so what you wanna do is, um, first of all, find out where 3 eighths is, okay? And um, the way that you do it is like this. So you first find out what is half of 1 fourth, okay? And it is 1 eighth, okay? You would multiply 1 half multiplied by 1 fourth gives you 1 eighth. 
which is that little line there. So what's the next value up? It would be 2 eighths, right? If you reduce 2 eighths, it gives you 1 fourth. So the next value is 3 eighths, and then 4 eighths and 5 eighths. So all you have to do is count the number of x's in that box that you see there, and you end up with 10. All right, so this is a fill in the blank question, which asks you to um, simplify the polynomial and write your answer in the box below. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to multiply things out. So you end up with this expression. And then the first thing that you're going to do is that you're going to combine like terms. And by combining like terms, what we mean is that you're going to get numbers that have the same exponent. Okay, so we're going to start with the bigger ones, with the uh, those numbers that are raised to the fifth power. So 7 and 5 plus 10 and 5, that gives you 3 and 5. Then we're going to add terms that are raised to the fourth power. So minus 6 and 4 plus 5 and 4, that gives you minus 1n. Uh, there's only one term with n, so that's that. And then we have a whole number, which is 3. So if you rewrite your equation, um, it would look like this. All right, so the next question is one of these uh, function questions, okay? And what you have to remember is that these functions are basically like an input-output system. So this is how you do it. Let's say that they give you that equation there on the left. What you have to do, what this table is showing you, is that if you plug that number for x in the equation on the left, you're going to get that value for y. Okay, so if we plug in 0 into this equation, we should get y is equal to 3. Okay, and you can see that that is the case. So, um, so if we do it for 2, for example, we would end up with minus 1. Okay, so now what we have to do is the same thing in this equation. So we would plug in the value for x, which is 3, like that. And then solve it, that gives you 25. Okay, and just part of like exam technique, um, if you look at the table, it tells you that uh, that if you get a value for 1, it's going to be 16.6. So you could essentially eliminate option A immediately and option B. It would be unlikely that you get option B, okay? So that would allow you to also eliminate a few options. Okay, so... Uh, Question eight, so sometimes in the GED, they also just kind of want to make sure that you would be able to set up an equation, okay, especially like an algebra equation. So this is one of those questions. So it says, um, in order to use a fancy health club, clients have the option of paying a 500 monthly fee or have a pay-as-you-go option. In the pay-as-you-go option, clients have to pay a 20 dollar non-refundable monthly fee and then five dollars per visit to the health club um okay and the question is which equation below uh, would you use to represent this okay so what you would have to do is um first of all figure out the fixed cost which is twenty dollars so every month rain or shine you're going to have to pay those twenty dollars and then um, that's fixed. And then you have a variable cost, okay, which is the $5 per visit to the health club. So if one month you only go once, then you would pay $5. If you go 10 times, you would pay $50, okay? So that's the variable cost. Okay, so we're going to uh, name x the number of visits. So we're going to write our equation like this, right? So y is equal to 5x. Right, so $5 multiplied by x, the number of visits, whether that's 1, 20, 100, plus the $20, which is the fixed cost that you have to pay every month. So that would be option A. All right, question nine is a geometry question, and it says DJ is planning to move across the country. He wants to find the cube container with the greatest volume to store his furniture. If each side of the container is six feet, what is the volume of the container? Okay, so um, he has a cube, they're telling us, uh, which is six feet on one side. So what you would do is use the equation for the volume of a cube, which is the edge 
uh, raised to the third power. Okay, in this case, uh, the edge or the side is six feet. So you would multiply six times six times six, or, or six cubed, and that gives you 216, which is option D. Okay, so the last question is also a geometry question, which is asking you to look at the value of x. And this question has two parts. So the first part is that you have to find out um, how much the right side is equal to. So if you remember, um, for a straight line, the straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, so we know that the left side of that line is 85. So we have to find out what the right side is. So to do that, we would subtract 180 minus 85. That gives us 95. And the reason that we're doing that is because now we need to set up our equation, right? So we would say 2x minus 25 is equal to 95. And that is step two. So we want to go ahead and solve for x. All right, so the way that we do this is on the left side, we will add 25. Remember that what you do on the left, you have to do to the right. So we end up with 2x is equal to 120. And now to isolate x, you want to divide both sides by 2. That gives you that x is equal to 60, which is option D. Okay, folks, that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you found any benefit, please consider subscribing. And as always, have a terrific rest of your day. Thank you again for your time.